keep on making, keep on making a way. Over, over. Unto you, unto you, I owe. I will, I will ever sing your praise. Glory to your name. Keep on, keep on making a way for me. Come on, let's do it again. Keep on making a way. Keep on making a way. Over, over. Come on, let's do that one more time. Keep on making a way. Keep on making a way. Over. Over and over again. Always bringing me out. Over. Over and over again. What you've done. What you've done so much. All to you. All to you. Keep on, keep on making a way for me, opening doors for me, taking care of me, taking care of me. Keep on, keep on making a way for me, opening doors for me, taking care of me. Soprano scene, keep on, keep on, keep on making a way for me, opening doors for me. I told Sing, keep on. Keep on, keep on. Taking it away for me. Open it up for me. Taking it away for me. Tennessee, keep on. Keep on. Keep on. Taking it away for me. Open it up for me. Taking it away for me. Come on, everybody, Sing, keep on. Keep on. Taking it away for me. Open it up for me. I will ever, I will ever sing your praise, glory to your name, keep on making a way for me. We come here today to give God praise and to give God glory for all the things that he's done for us in our lives. God, we thank you and we praise you. And right now we come singing praises to your name. I give you praise. Holy Lamb, oh, Holy Lamb, oh precious Lamb, oh, precious Lamb, so much I owe to you, O oh Lord. You sacrifice, you sacrifice your life for me. Your life for me. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. And you, I'm 
and I will sing. Oh, precious King. Oh, precious King. In you there's joy. In you there's peace. In you there's peace. Almighty Savior. Almighty Savior. My soul. My soul loves thee. Oh, holy Lamb. Oh, precious Lamb. So much I owe. To you, O oh Lord, you sacrifice your life for me. Your life for me. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Come on, everybody, sing. Oh, holy love. Jesus Christ. It's just good to be here this morning. <clears throat> We're so grateful that uh, you have chosen to worship with us. And we are prayerful that something will be said to encourage you this morning. On behalf of our pastor in his absence, we uh, welcome you this morning. <clears throat> I want you to, if you would, to take your Bibles and go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And we like to read verse 17 and verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 and verse 18. When you find it, you're going to find these words. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting Life. I want to speak to you this morning from this subject, the cross, the purpose of the cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. I love that old cross were the dearest and the best. For the world of lost sinners was slain. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true. 
his shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me home someday to then he'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for Jesus' suffering. Thank God for his substitutionary, sacrificial death on the cross. Them who are perishing, it is foolishness. Uh, the word foolishness in the text is the same word in the Greek for morons. Uh, you've heard that word used before. Uh, the world thinks that we are morons for coming to church every uh, Sunday morning. The world thinks that we are crazy for trusting in a God uh, that we have never seen, uh, for believing in a cross that we've only heard about, uh, for shouting uh, over a crucifixion and a resurrection that we have just preached about. But we are here this morning, not because we are fools, not because we are crazy, not because we are out of our mind. We are here because the only thing that makes sense to us is Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I couldn't make it in this life if I didn't know uh, that God cares for me. I need somebody here who's been through the valley and the shadow of death. Uh, I need somebody who's had their back against the wall and God provided just enough space between your back and the wall that you're able to testify that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Is there anybody here who can testify that you've had to cry in the midnight hour, but God has dried your tears. God has opened doors. God has made a way out of nowhere. He He's been a provider. He's been a keeper. He's been a sustainer. He's been your company keeper. Whatever you needed, God has provided. No, you're not crazy. You're not a fool. You're not out of your mind. The only thing that makes sense is if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, my enemy would have swallowed me up. The preaching of the cross is strange. It's a shocking, it's, it's, it's shocking, it's, but, but it's a simple story. He died. Didn't he die? But early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with all power in his hand. And brothers and sisters, he arose for sinners like you and I. Uh, he died for sinners just like you and I. God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Here is a worthy praise, worthy thing about Jesus and Christianity. All other uh, so-called religions of the world says that you have to get yourself together, uh, then you can come over and join them. Uh, that's the position of uh, the position of Muslims. That's the position of all other world religions that you have to do something or in order to join them. Um, uh, once once you put your, your, yourself uh, up, uh, once you pull yourself up, once you have enlightenment, once you have been have seen the light, once you have gotten it all together, then you can come and join them. But the praiseworthy and marvelous thing about Jesus and Christianity, a Christian religion, is he doesn't wait for you and I to get ourselves together. He comes in uh, your life, even while you are in your sins, while you are still in your mess. When, when you're in the ditch, he gets in the ditch with you, and he does not tell you to pull yourself up, but he gets there in there with you and helps you to stand on your feet, and he walks with you uh, through your Christian journey. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, that's what separates Jesus from all other so-called religious leaders who 
uh, of this world. He died uh, not for a good man, not for a righteous woman, but he died for a wretched sinner like you and I. And, and that may not mean much to you if you haven't sinned much, but uh, you can't shout much if you haven't sinned much. But some of us here got some skeletons in our closets, uh, uh, some decisions we wish we hadn't made, some words we wish we hadn't spoken, and the Lord has delivered us from that. Watch this. Salvation is not just what God delivers you from. Salvation is also what God keeps you from. Let me see if I can help us. Some, some of us don't have the testimony of being on drugs or alcohol. Uh, and God delivered, uh, delivered us. He delivered us. Some of us, our testimony has nothing to do with going to jail. It has nothing to do with being a prostitute. But God kept us from those things. Uh, you could have been in jail. You could have been a prostitute. Uh, you could have been outdoors. And, and listen, salvation is not just what God delivered you from, but what he kept you and I from getting involved in. And that's enough uh, to give him praise. That's enough to shout this morning. Because he didn't have to put his hands on you. Uh, the preaching of the cross is foolishness. To them who are perishing. It's foolishness to the people who are lost. And brothers and sisters, don't let the lost folks dictate your worldview. I'm standing on the bank safe and you're in the river drowning. And you're going to give me advice. No, don't, don't, don't get your opinion uh, from people who are lost. Uh, don't look at the world through the eyes of people who are lost. Uh, because the scripture says they are perishing. Uh, they call us fools when they are perishing. We are uh, the only one who has a lifeboat. Uh, they are perishing, but they call us fools. Uh, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them who are perishing, but to us who are saved, it is the power of God. Uh, let, let, let me take a minute to... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about the purpose of the cross. Uh, what is the purpose of the cross? I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, the purpose of the cross, may, my brothers and sisters, is about making a statement. Mm, God once and forever made a statement at the cross. Uh, with uh, Christ's death on the cross, uh, God was able to declare boldly, uh, for all to see his endless, matchless love for the lost people in this world. Uh, the cross is God's statement of love on the, to the world. In Deuteronomy, he said, I didn't choose you uh, because you were the biggest. Uh, I didn't choose you because you are the larger in number. I didn't choose you because you went to seminary school. I didn't choose you because you had a doctorate degree. I didn't choose you because you were rich. I chose you because I love you. Uh, in Jeremiah chapter 31, he says, I, uh, I've loved you with an everlasting love. He said, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, plan, plans to give you a future and a hope. He says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are more than a conqueror. I am persuaded that neither uh, death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, things present, or things to come. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. And it's not because I've been so holy uh, is there anybody here who knows that you are not here this morning because of the good you did last week? Because if the truth be told, some of us got some stuff uh, in our past, and I'm not talking about 30 years ago. I'm not talking about 29 years ago or 10 years ago. Uh, we did some stuff last week that God should have cut us off. 
But every time we sinned and went to the Father for mercy, Jesus stood up at the right hand and said, I know he's guilty of that crime, but I've already paid the price. Anybody here know that your sins have been washed away? Anybody here know your name has been written in the Lamb Book of Life? God made a statement. No matter what you've done, I love you. Your sin is not greater than God's grace. Listen, people despise you on speculation, but God loves you with all the evidence. Somebody missed that. People are not speaking to you over stuff they heard about you. And God knows everything about you, and he still opened doors for you. So you think I'm going to let you dictate for me how I praise God? All that God has done for me, all the doors God has opened for me, all the ways that God has made for me. I've got so many clothes and I have to stand in front of my closet trying to decide what I want to wear. I got enough shoes that I don't have to wear the same pair of shoes the next day. I, I never had to go hungry. I can choose what I want to wear. Why? Because God has been good to me and God knows everything about me. He made a statement on Calvary that no matter how sinful you've been, there's room at the cross. No matter how filthy you are, no matter how dirty you are, Isaiah said, though your sins though, though the, your sins be as scarlet, uh, they can be white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, uh, God can make them like wool. Whoever you are, no matter who you are, uh, where you've been, what you've done, God loves you. I stop by to tell you, God loves you. That's a statement that God made on the cross. But the purpose of the cross is not just about making a statement. It's about providing salvation. Uh, there is no other way to cleanse sin but through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, Oprah Winfrey once said, there's a thousand ways to get to God. That's not true. Uh, there's only uh, one way uh, to get to God. Uh, and my brothers and sisters, that's the foundation of our faith. That's the bedrock of our, our Christian religion. The only way to get to God is through his son, Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, there is no other way. He says if you come in any other way, you come as a thief and a robber. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the door. I am uh, the water of life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the door of the sheepfold. I am the chief shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. Nobody gets to God but through Jesus Christ. Listen, not through church membership, because you can be a member of the church and never know Jesus Christ. Uh, not by singing in the choir, not by doing enough, because when uh, will you know that you've done enough? It's not about what you do. It's not about uh, it's not about how you do it. It's about what Jesus did. Uh, did you get that? It's not a, it's not about what you do. It's about what has already been done for you. He died for your sins and my sins, and that's enough to secure our salvation. In the Old Testament, there was a bull and goats, bullocks on the altar, lambs uh, of consecration, lambs without spot or blemish, and their blood was shed continually, 24 hours a day. Uh, the priests were in the temple sacrificing for the sins of the people, and it covered their sins, but it did not uh, take away their, 
that did not, not, they did not take away their sin. Somebody ought to help me this morning. The blood, the blood, and goats and asses and she goats and all that blood that was shed in the Old Testament system covered sin, but it did not wash it away. Uh, 24 hours a day, the priest uh, uh, was in the temple making sacrifice for the sins of the people. And then once a year on the Day of Atonement, the Bible says he was dressed in his ceremonial uh, ephod with bells around the tassel of his garment with a rope tied around his waist. And he, he would go behind uh, the veil uh, that separates the holies of holies from the most holy once a year. And he, he made a sacrifice for the sins of the people. And, and those barrels were on his, part of his castle and that rope was around his waist. So if he dropped dead, uh, the veil would, uh, behind the veil, he could be pulled out. Because nobody could go uh, back there but the high priest, and he can only go only go once a year on the Day of Atonement. But when Jesus died, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom, knocking uh, out forever the intermediary between God and man. And now we 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 don't need a high priest because. Uh, we already have one uh, in the face and the person of Jesus Christ. He died not to cover our sins, but to wash uh, our sins away. But Chuck Todd, who hosts uh, Meet the Press, was on Morning Joe, and they were talking about Donald Trump, and Chuck Todd said that uh, the Republican Party cannot decide whether or not Trump is a tattoo or a stain. Uh, somebody didn't get that. He said if he, he has, if he's a tattoo, uh, they will have to live with it. But if it's a stain, here is here's the shout. Here it is. It can be washed away. Uh, uh, thank God the sins I commit, the sins I'm uh, presently committing, the sins I will commit tomorrow. It's not a tattoo for the stain. Uh, and since it's a stain, it can be washed away by the blood of Jesus. Somebody ought to help me preach this morning. Is there anybody here? I said, does anybody here know that your sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus? That's something to shout about this morning, not just on Sunday morning, but every time you think of how good God has been to you, in spite of you, how he washed away your sins, uh, you ought to shout, uh, test one, two, test, test one, is this mic on? Uh, is anybody hearing me this morning? I thank God that every sin I've ever committed, he washed in the blood. Every sin I committed right uh, now, uh, omission and by omission and commission, he took care of it on the cross. And the sins I am going to commit tomorrow, Satan is going to come before God and, and accuse me. And uh, Jesus will say, I know he's guilty, but I took care of that one Friday morning on the cross. Brothers and sisters, it's not about how good you look today. Because you can look good today and be the biggest sinner in town. You can dress out on Sunday morning and be lost and on your way to hell. Uh, God didn't have to let you get up this morning. Uh, you're not here because you've been uh, reading the Bible and exercising and dieting and keeping uh, your weight down and making sure that you go to bed early at night because somebody uh, who did all of that didn't wake up this morning. But God woke you up and he woke you up in your right mind and, and that's reason uh, for you and I to give God praise. I don't care who who's around you. I don't care what uh, they say about you. I don't care uh, what anybody else thinks. 
You have got to be able to say, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. He, he made a statement when he died for me, and the purpose of the cross is about my salvation. But this last word, and I'm through. The cross is about making a statement. It's about providing salvation. And the cross is about defeating Satan. Now, hear me, my brothers and sisters. Satan ain't got no beef with us. Satan is not really concerned about us because he's the enemy of God. And since God loves us, Satan hates us. He does not hate us because we pose any threat to him. He hates us because he knows the fight is fixed. Uh, let me see if I can help somebody. Let me let me see if I can help somebody who's always binding the devil. Uh, yeah, you bind the devil. Get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, I bind that sounds and uh, that, that I bind that sounds so spiritual. Uh, you bind the devil and uh, you got a fish emblem on the back of your car and you answer your phone, praise the Lord. And people ask you, uh, uh, how are you doing? And you're too blessed to be stressed and uh, you blessed and highly favored. And Satan understands, uh, Satan is under my feet. And that sounds real good, but Satan falls on the ground, on the floor, uh, in hell, laughing when you say that because uh, you don't uh, in intimidate the devil. You are not a match for the devil because Satan uh, has stripped up greater people than you and I. I wish I had a witness here. I'm through now. But I heard an old preacher say they, they brought him before an unjust jury and convicted him of a crime that he did not commit. They made a cross for him to bear and he was made to carry that cross to a hill called Calvary. And on Calvary, uh, they nailed him to that old rugged cross. They hung him between two thieves, one on the right and one on the left. Somebody said they heard uh, him say, if one on the thief said, if thou be the son of God, uh, then save yourself and us too. Then the other said, leave him alone. He's done no wrong. But you and I are guilty of our crime. I read somewhere that the sun refused to shine and the moon went into hemorrhage and darkness filled the place. Somebody said, surely this must be the Son of God. Uh, the Bible says they pierced him in the side and blood and water came streaming down. Uh, he cried, Eli, 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 Sabbathene, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he lowered his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died on that old rugged cross. But early, uh, early, uh, that's what he said, but early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Uh, ain't he all right this morning? Ain't he all right this morning? Anybody here know that he's all right? The question I have for you this morning is do you know him? I said, do you know him? Jesus, if Jesus should come back this very hour, would you be ready? This is the hour of call to discipleship. If you're here this morning, if you're listening this morning, and uh, you know that you have not uh, made that confession of faith, today salvation has come to your house. If you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Bible says that you shall be saved. Jesus said that if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says thou shall be saved. Pray with me this morning. 
if you know that you have not confessed Christ, you've not invited him in your heart, and you desire to have Christ into your heart, pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we bow before you. Father, I, com I confess to you this morning that I am a sinner, that I've sinned against thee and against heaven. Father, I ask that you forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Father, I ask, Lord God, that you will come into my heart. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that he was buried. I believe that he was resurrected. And I believe, Lord God, that he lives and he's seated on the right hand of your throne, interceding on my behalf. Father, I thank you, I praise you, and I glorify your name. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ that I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer of faith this morning, the Bible says that you are saved. Uh, the Bible says that uh, if Jesus should come back this very hour, that uh, uh, you'll be, spend, be able to spend eternity with him. Now, we as a Baptist denomination, we also believe that there's another part of this salvation. And that uh, the second part of this salvation is water baptism. Uh, water baptism means that you made, you're showing, it has an outward sign that you made an inward change in your heart to follow after Jesus Christ. We are excited for you. And we would love to baptize you here at Macedonia. Uh, if you're, uh, you're a member of another church and you made that confession, uh, we uh, pray that you will share with your pastor uh, where he can uh, welcome you and where he can uh, also ordain you. And we believe that's, name, that's done in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. I believe that Pastor would like to, uh, to remind us uh, that on July the 7th, it's going to be a ha hallelujah day. It's going to be a shouting day. Uh, we are we are convening into our, our church and we uh, will start our regular services back again. Everything will go in order as it was before the pandemic. Our 8 o'clock service will begin, our 1045 service, our Sunday school. And our Sunday school, uh, we've got to set, got to, uh, uh, put some classes in some other places. Our, our class 9, Deacon Rayleigh's class is going to be in the, the sanctuary. And Deacon Rhodes' class, class 9 is going to be in the fellowship hall. We are still practicing. Pastors asking us to continue to practice safe distances. And we're also asking you to please wear your mask, just, not just for the safety of others, but the safety of yourselves as well. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Pray for our pastor and first lady as they travel, their family, uh, that God will bless them and God will uh, return them back home to our safety. Amen. That being said, God bless you. God keep you. We pray that you will have a blessed rest of your day.